I'm Dan Satterberg, King County Prosecuting Attorney, and this is recorded for release on August 20th, 2020. Today, my office is filing criminal charges against an Auburn police officer for the May 31st, 2019 shooting death of Jesse Saray outside an Auburn convenience store. We're filing two charges against Auburn officer Jeff Nelson, murder in the second degree and assault in the first degree, both class A felonies. Now, this case was investigated by the Port of Seattle Police and delivered to the King County Prosecuting Attorney's Office in November of 2019. Since then, we have been preparing this case for filing. Now, this is the first time that we have charged a police officer for the use of deadly force since the passage of Initiative 940, which changed the legal standard of criminal liability for an unjustified use of force by a police officer. The new legal standard requires evidence that the defendant's conduct falls outside of the range of what a reasonable officer would do under similar circumstances. And this requires us to use expert testimony. This case also required the services of a video expert to synchronize recordings from several different security cameras in the area. This work was crucial to our analysis and to the conclusions by our use of force experts and it was not completed until March of 2020. Now the two use of force experts that we have retained have during their careers testified on all sides of criminal and civil cases regarding the intersection of police training and police tactics. They're well versed in the new legal standard in our state that focuses on whether an officer's use of deadly force is reasonable. The certification for determination of probable cause sets forth the essential facts of this case. It started with an earlier interaction between Officer Nelson and Mr. Saray at a Walgreens drugstore. Officer Nelson had a brief conversation with Mr. Saray, who was visibly under the influence of drugs. Officer Nelson asked him to leave the area. Now it should be noted that Officer Nelson is seven inches taller and 75 pounds heavier than Mr. Saray. Mr. Saray left the Walgreens as instructed, but he jaywalked across a busy street and ended up outside the Sunshine Grocery nearby. Officer Nelson then decided to arrest him for the misdemeanor crime of disorderly conduct. Officer Nelson pulled his police car into the Sunshine Grocery parking lot and called for backup, but he did not wait for any other officer to arrive. As I mentioned, the video of this case is crucial to the decision to file the case crucial to the analysis by our experts. So I wanna talk about what the video shows in several different segments and then play it in its entirety. The first 38 second segment shows Officer Nelson getting out of his patrol car and verbally confronting Mr. Saray, telling Mr. Saray that he is under arrest for disorderly conduct. <laughs> I, I told you to stop picking stuff, stop throwing stuff, right? Okay, so now you gotta put your hands behind your back, okay? You gotta put your hands behind your back. Huh? Okay. You're under arrest for disorderly conduct, okay? Put it down. The next short segment is only six seconds long, but it shows Officer Nelson intensifying his efforts to effect an arrest and seeking to physically subdue Mr. Saray. Put it down. You just stop touching me, boy. Hey, listen to me. Keep your hands listen off of me. me. The third video segment shows Officer Nelson and Mr. Saray continuing to struggle and Officer Nelson begins a series of seven punches toward Mr. Saray's head and upper body. What the hell are you doing? What's going on there? I'm going to rock you. What the stupid ass? Oh. In the fourth video segment, a witness leans down out of view of the video to pick up Officer Nelson's closed folding knife that had fallen to the ground. The witness then puts the knife on the hood of a car. 
Officer Nelson is seen pushing Mr. Saray against a freezer box while drawing his weapon with his right hand and bending to his right. Officer Nelson fires one shot into Mr. Saray's torso. He then clears a round that jammed in his pistol and he fired a second shot into Mr. Saray's forehead 3.44 seconds later. Stop resisting, dude. Just go down. Bullshit, you're not. Oh my god. Oh my god. Now watch the whole video again, uninterrupted. I, I told you to stop kicking stuff. Stop throwing stuff, right? Okay, so now you gotta put your hands behind your back. Okay? You gotta put your hands behind your back. I'm not kicking anything. Huh? I'm not kicking anything. Okay. You're under arrest for disorderly conduct. Okay? Put it down. Put it down. You just stop touching me, bro. Hey, listen to me. Keep your hands listen off of me. me. Hey, what the hell are you doing? What's going on there? Good. I'm going to rock you. Fucking stupid ass. Oh, oh. We allege that Officer Nelson's actions with respect to both shots were unreasonable. A jury will consider independently each shot that Officer Nelson decided to take. And thus we have brought a charge to reflect each gunshot. The murder charge relates to the first shot, which ultimately brought about Mr. Saray's death. The assault charge relates to the second shot to the head, 3.4 seconds later, which remarkably was determined to not be the fatal shot. Officer Nelson's pistol jammed after the first shot. He is seen re-racking the slide to clear the obstruction. He then looks at the eyewitness standing nearby and with his arms fully extended, fires a second round into the forehead of Mr. Saray. Our experts determined that Officer Nelson did not follow his training in a number of ways and that those failures needlessly provoked the circumstances that led to Mr. Saray's death. He did not de-escalate the situation. He did not wait for backup. Officer Nelson went hands-on with Mr. Saray in just 38 seconds, and Mr. Saray was fatally shot twice, 29 seconds later. The use of force experts, one a former police chief from Idaho and another a former deputy police chief from California, they determined that Officer Nelson created the very situation that brought about his use of deadly force. Our decision today reflects the changes brought by Initiative 940, which was overwhelmingly approved by voters statewide. Those changes in the law, which affect cases from January 2019 onward, make it clear that there should be an increased role for juries to decide whether the particular application of deadly force by law enforcement constitutes a crime. But for cases that happened before 2019, state law required prosecutors to show that the officer acted with malice, that is evil intent, plus a lack of good faith. This was essentially an impossible standard to meet. Initiative 940 changed the standard to read, a peace officer shall not be held criminally liable for using deadly force in good faith, where good faith is an objective standard which shall consider all of the facts, circumstances, and information known to the officer at the time to determine whether a similarly situated, reasonable officer would have believed that the use of deadly force was necessary to prevent death or serious physical harm to the officer or another individual. Thus, Officer Nelson's use of deadly force is only justified if a reasonable officer would have shot Mr. Saray to prevent him from causing death or serious physical harm to the officer or to other people in the area. It is the opinion of the two experts on police use of force that Officer Nelson's actions failed to meet this good faith standard required by Washington state law. 
Initiative 940 has changed the legal analysis and standard of proof, and it will still be the rare case that warrants consideration by a jury of criminal liability. The state must first prove that the officer's conduct failed to meet a standard of reasonableness and that the homicide was not justified under the law, and also that it was not a reasonable claim of self-defense. Now, in filing these charges today, we are at the start of a long process in this case. I know that not everyone will agree with this decision, but I hope that the public will understand that Initiative 940 brought about a new standard for review of officer-involved shooting cases, the reasonable officer standard, which is now the law of our state. We are not seeking bail or to detain Officer Nelson during the pendency of this proceeding. We will, however, ask a judge to prohibit him from possessing firearms. We look forward to presenting this evidence to a jury, which will make the final and ultimate decision about criminal liability. Thank you.